Okay, this is the back Nexus glove box. Now this has uh, HEPA filters up here. You get a vertical laminar, laminar flow, flows down through a perforated uh, tabletop here. You get two chambers. An end chamber. Uh, large and small. Now this is heated. The maximum temperature is uh, 200 degrees Celsius. Up here you'll see is our screen. And you can see we're at right now we're at 0 0.6 ppm of oxygen and uh, almost at 1 ppm of uh, moisture, just slightly above that. And here's our pressure. We set our, our, our range is between plus and minus five right now. You, that can be changed and we're right about zero in pressure. And our blower speed is at 50. Now to control your operator panel here, you, you do you have a uh, an operator panel down here. There is no light connected right now, so uh, the light is left off. And to step through your screen up there, you hit the function key. And then the up and down arrow to uh, select the menu item. So let's look at the dry train. As you see right now, we're at uh, purifier one. There are two purifiers in here, one and two. And this is where you you select your uh, purifier or your region. And to get out of that, we just hit the escape button. And get back to the main screen. So like I said, we have two purifiers inside of here. We have the covers on it right now. The media in both have been replaced, the emulsive and the uh, copper catalyst. So you have fresh media in both the uh, purifiers. Over here is our oxygen sensor. That's the cell for the oxygen sensor is new, we just replaced that. And if we walk around this side here, I'll show you where the moisture sensor is. Oh, while we're coming across, this is a, uh, this for the static elim eliminator bar that's uh, located inside the glove box. And then coming around here, you'll see that we have the, uh, this is our sensor for uh, moisture. the uh, AMX1 Plus. And while we're over here too, I'll show you, we have a scroll pump here. This is your vacuum pump, it's a dry pump. It's used to bring the pressure down inside the glove box. It's also used for regeneration, and it's used to remove the uh, atmosphere from the uh, anti-chambers. Here's our OC1 controller. This is the only, uh, this uses 220 volts. The rest of the system runs off of 110, so I have a couple of plugs here. Now coming to the back here is where you bring in your gas line. And they're labeled. So we have a purge vent here. There's a pressure gauge here and monitors the pressure of the uh, purifier. Pressure to the, the box. We have a pressure control line. You'd hook up your regeneration gas here. Uh, the recommendation on that is 35 PSI. And in our inert gas, right now we're using nitrogen as our inert gas. And then just coming up slightly here, you'll see this is our control for our blowers. There's two blowers on each one of these lines internally for the uh, laminar flow inside the box. So you can control this on office here and you can control the speed the left and the right side by using these pots here. Just coming around here, we have, this is our out. This is where, this will go, uh, we'll bring the nitrogen from the box through the purifier. So you have this line here. There's a filter inside of here. You have a couple of uh, ball valves. So the flow is in this direction through the purifier, and then we'll go back to this other side here and you'll see the other side. So once, once it goes through the purifier, it enters back into the glove box through this 
uh, port here. So you have two ball valves to isolate it if you need to do any work on it. There's a filter in here. We have a purge valve right here. When you do the purge vent, it'll come out through this valve and it's exhausted. You have your exhaust here. Right, right now I have the mini anti chamber under vacuum. There's your gauge for that. This is all manual operated. So in order to bring that back up the atmosphere, you just open your refill valve. Close that off and then you can open your mini anti chamber. Look inside of that. Okay, what I want to do here is I'm going to set the uh, pressure range here a little bit higher. And what I'm going to do is vent the uh, large anti chamber. So to do that, I'm going to hit the function key. I'm going to move down to lab pressure. I'm going to set the pressure limits. I'm going to leave the high set at 5. If I'm using the up and down arrow, that, that can be changed. You can see it's dropping the green bar. I'll just set it at 3.5. Hit enter on that. Now it's asking for a low limit to be this side. And I'm going to bring that up. Let's bring that up to say one and a half. Let me get back to the main screen again. I'll hit exit, uh, escape, excuse me, and escape again. And one more time. And now what I'll do is hit the function key and go to the auto back menu. And I'm going to manually refill. Escape out of that. Button. The function key to select. I'm going to use the arrow key to drop down to the manual refill. And the function key to enter. So as you can see, our pressure is coming up. Come back when we uh, when we get atmosphere. Okay, as you can see by this gauge here, and also by this, we have the uh, Ferrani gauge here, which is looking at the uh, vacuum or the pressure inside the large anti chamber. You can see they're both at atmosphere. This is your Ferrani gauge hooked up here, and while we're here, this is your uh, your ball valve to open up to uh, vacuum. Open the vacuum pump up to the anti chamber, and this line is. Uh, a high pressure airline, it's necessary to uh, open this wall valve. So I have that hooked up independently. So now that we're at atmosphere, I'll go back to the menu here. I'll escape to uh, get back to the main screen. And what we'll do is we'll open the anti chamber door. Look inside. You can see your heater elements in here, and you have a slide shell. Silicone O-ring. This has been replaced. This is brand new. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, place this wrench in here, and we'll transfer that back in. Close this up. Now we'll go back to the uh, auto back menu. Hit enter. Now we have a sequence in there, and we'll take a look at that. We'll set the evacuation time. So it's a minute and 30 seconds. And then a number of cycles. Oh, that's the time again. Let's go to the number of cycles. And we'll do three cycles. And we'll start the uh, auto sequence. And we need to start one more time. You see the ball valve open here? 
you can use your control valve for that, for the uh, high pressure air open this valve. Now we're evacuating down, you can see the, uh, the gauge pressure there. So it'll do this for a minute and 30 seconds, and then it'll refill it back up and it'll cycle three times. Once that occurs, then we'll, we'll transfer the wrench back into the, uh, into the glove box. We'll come back when that's done. Okay, while we're waiting for the uh, anti-chamber to cycle, you can see there the vacuum valve closed, now it's refilling. Take a look at the screen here. I just want to show you a few more things. Down here we have a, a foot switch to operate the pressure inside the box. The right adds pressure, the left will remove the pressure from the box. And then the other thing I want to point out here is we do have a glove changer. And the instructions on how to use this when you need to replace a glove are explained in the manual that you'll receive. You also uh, have all the instructions for the OC1 and how to operate the, uh, the panel with any uh, manual for both. Okay, it looks like we're in the second cycle now, so it's evacuating again. Like I said, it's been programmed 100, uh, a minute and 30 seconds to evacuate, it'll refill. We'll do that three times, then we'll transfer the wrench back in here. And uh, when that's ready to go, we'll come back. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to point out. As you can see, there is an, a door on the left-hand side of this glove box. It's, uh, it's not non-functional right now. So what we did is we, uh, we put a seal on the outside and blanked it off with this plate here. So if in the future you want to attach something to there, you can always just take this plate off and then uh, connect your airline up and you'll be able to use that door on that side. But for now, it's sealed up tight, it's non-functional. Okay, we're done with our third cycle here. It's uh, refilling the large anti-camera. We're looking at our gauge here, we're almost at zero. All right, up there it's now saying that it's complete. Press escape to quit. So I'll hit the escape button on the operator panel. And now I'll be able to transfer that wrench inside. Um, so let, me, let me open up the... Uh... Okay, what I'm gonna do is I opened up the, uh, the range here a little bit. I'm gonna use the foot switch and I'm gonna take out some of the uh, pressure that's inside the box. I don't have to fight with the gloves here. Get my hand in the glove. And I'll transfer the wrench inside the glove. So here you just need to pull on a red handle here. You can slide the shelf in. And then I'll transfer the wrench inside the glove. This is an example. I'll close that up. Now, the thing to take note is that after doing that transfer, you'll notice that the oxygen stayed low as well as the moisture. Right, so one final thing is I'll uh, I'll explain the uh, OC1 here, the oven controller how that works. Uh, you have your main power here. Again, this is the only uh, part of the system that uses 220 volts. The rest is 110. So your main power would be here. When you power it up, you're going to get a, uh, going to go through a self-test. You've got an instruments on and off. Again, self-test here. These are all just indicator lights up here, so they don't do anything, but you can check to see if the lights working. And you have a manual and time mode. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is I'll just, uh, in manual mode, I'll hit the start button. And what that does is turn the heaters on. And this being your temperature controller here, so it's set to 50. And then we have our uh, other temp protection, set to 145. So in order to see the vacuum here, you have to go back into the main screen, which I'll do here. And we'll 
I'll just manually evacuate the Ooh, manual evacuation here. Again, our wall valve up opens. We're pulling back in inside here. Now you can leave it at this, at this point. I'm leaving it for uh, an hour or so. It's going to get down to around uh, 20 millimeters. Temperature's starting to come up inside the handy can. So we'll let this evacuate and we'll let the uh, temperature come up a little bit. And we'll come back and look at it while it's at 50. Okay, so what I did is I stopped the vacuum and added a little uh, gas into the handy chamber just to help the uh, heating. And you can see we're at 50 here. Now the thermocouple is pretty close to the element inside for the uh, over uh, That can be readjusted, but that's why this is reading so much higher. So let's go ahead and set this at a higher. Let's set it up to 150. And we'll come back and look at it at 150. Okay, we set this to... Uh, Temperature the uh, anti chamber to uh, 150. Over temp can be set by hitting the set button here. Again, selecting. So I set that to uh, 200. And while we're here, I just want to show you the uh, time mode and uh, switching the time. Uh, we have our time set here. change it the same way as the uh, temperature controller. Let me just go to stop first. We're in time here and we'll hit start. So we're in minutes, we'll show that this is actually climbing down. And what this will do is once it's climbed out for 15 minutes, we'll shut the heater off. So we'll show that uh, operation. We'll come back and take a look at that in a few minutes. Okay, you see the timer went down, it's now at 13 minutes, counting down. Our temperatures are coming up. And like I said, I did add a little gas in the anti chamber so it heats a little bit better. And so we're at about the uh, Light vacuum. Okay, we're down, and we're now at one minute here left on the timer. And I just want to show you that as the time's out, the heater will shut off. Go. So we've got it right there, and you can see we're uh, we were approaching 150 here, right at 128. But now the heater's off, so what I can do is always switch back to manual, hit stop, and then uh, hit start again. So now I'm manually heating the any channel. You see the temperatures are, are off a little bit again. I said the uh, we may need to reposition the over temp uh, protection thermocouple. And you'll see that when you, when you open the inside here. So if you need to reposition it, you can always reposition it. To be more closely uh, associated with the 150 degrees. Uh, one last thing, we'll step through some of the screens up top. That's our auto back menu. Hit escape to get out of that. The next one would be our purge menu. Take a look at that. You got your purge time, purge cycle, smart level. Again, all this is explained in a manual that you'll see. Uh, we'll look at the dry train. I think we looked at that already, but we'll quickly look at it again. This is where you select your purifier and your regeneration if you, want, if you want to do the regeneration. And what else? We got our oxygen menu. 
this is to set alarm, do the calibration. Again, this is in the manual. And you have a moisture menu. Again, to set your alarms. Low and high limit. And we're setting our lab pressure here. Pressure limits are set there. Safety limits I have set at. 9.5 for the high, and minus 9.5 for the low, and finally, oh, there's a diagnostic routine. It's explaining in the manual how to use that. And again, the escape to get out. And just to point out one more time, we're at 0 0.5 oxygen level here. Minus 73 Celsius 2.3 moisture.